Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RecN, with a digital rebar training video for 4.6 high availability. And we're going to walk you through how to set up and run a high availability cluster. Uh, if you look in the documentation for digital rebar, you will find this in the high availability section. I will start calling it HA under bootstrapping consensus via raft. So for this, we're going to be following the high availability consensus uh, instructions. What I have running for a system uh, will be a three digital rebar endpoint cluster. You need to have at least three and it needs to be an odd number. I've already built my first digital rebar system here uh, and, and set it up. So let's take a look at that before I go any further. Uh, it's running on 192.156.1, 8092. It's a brand new system. And I've already gone through the setup wizard. So everything is running here. Um, I could bootstrap machines and add them into the infrastructure, uh, but it's already got a uh, cycle set up. This is my testing cycle. So literally, my if I booted a new machine into it, it's, it's set up for load testing here. And it's going to go through and reboot, recycle, and reset, and just keep going through that, that system. I'm going to bring up a couple of machines here uh, because we'll use those as we go through the HA process and validate that they are, are moving into different systems. Here, what you'll see is as the machines come up, they're getting their um, TFTP instructions from that host. Uh, there's most of the things transition very easily with. Uh, HA, their TFTP is not particularly HA friendly, so there's times when um, it's part of this testing, we actually can detect where things are moving around and, and how they're going. So I have a couple machines now running just single, single user mode. If I go into our license manager, here you can see them starting to show up in the system. If I go into the info and preferences side, what you'll see here is um, I do not currently have HA enabled. It's a standalone endpoint. Uh, we are tracking endpoint subscriptions. That is part of how we used to do HA predominantly, which would mean that we'd have endpoints subscribing to each other. That is still an important feature for different use cases like manager um, and backups. And if you have, have subscribers using it, you'll see them listed here. It's uh, one of the features of the product. But we want to do HA. And now that I have a basic system running, I can start doing my HA setup. Uh, handy thing is here, you'll get to see continual operation of the system because I'm running in console mode. You could do the same thing by tailing um, job cuddle. So to make this work, let me grab an installer line. What we want to do is SSH into that first box, 192.168.56.100. That looks great. And then I'm going to just run a standard curl install. Importantly, I'm specifying DRP ID. I could also minimize the contents and there's a no contents flag. I'm trying to keep this super simple. So it's going through and doing that run. I need another node. So while that works in the background, I'm going to set up machine, whoops, machine 100, not going to work. Uh, it's excellent. I'm glad to stop. I have to SSH into root at 192.168.56.101 here. That looks much better come in and do that second install. So now I have two DRP machines that are both installed and running, or I will in, in a moment. Now they don't know about each other. They're three completely standalone digital rebar systems. And that's what I need to start this uh, going. Very important, you do want to start with three. So while this install is, is going on, I'm going to take over here and I have to go over to do some command line operations. Let me bring over Command, a, a command line, a clearly different uh, color command line here for you to watch me build that cluster. Um, but I do want to be able to watch what happens a little bit. So over here, should be able to watch all the pieces that were going. And I'm going to go ahead and run the commands uh, to build my endpoint. So first, make sure I'm talking to the right endpoint. That looks excellent. And I'm going to run the HA enroll command. So let me, this is, I've cut, cut and pasted this for convenience, but I want to walk you through it. So DRPCLI system HA enroll. 
on the first machine. So this is going to turn that single standalone digital rebar into a high availability system. So this is the uh, address of that machine and its login information. So this allows DRPCLI to talk to that system. You will need that in all the cases for all the enrollments. Since this is the first, uh, we're going to provide a little bit of extra information. Uh, I do need my consensus address. We made a design decision to make this specific. So say you were running your consensus address on a different NIC or a different subnet, you can specify that very precisely here. I just picked uh, the next port range up. It does need to be a different port than the API port. Um, it's not an observer. It's going to be an active participant. This is the NIC that I'm using. It's the VBOX Neuro NIC, NIC, which is on that interface. I have to give it an HA ID. This is the only time I do that, so I'm telling it what um, ID the cluster is going to share. This also must be a licensed uh, uh, endpoint ID. So you have to have a license for the individual endpoints and the HA endpoint ID. So there's N plus one for your cluster um, license endpoint restrictions. We don't control, we don't limit those for people um, in enterprise accounts. So just register the extra. We can walk you through how that, how that goes. And then um, we do need to provide a virtual address for uh, the cluster to share. And this is going to become our primary IP address for all interactions with the system. I'll show you how that works. Um, the endpoints will still listen on their old address. So the endpoint is still running, even if it's not the active machine of a cluster. And we take advantage of that fact too. And you can still talk uh, to the API and get info. But I have to provide a virtual address. Uh, this is different if you're going to put a DNS or a load balancer in front of the system. And so there are different configuration steps for this. This is the simpler let digital rebar deal with the virtual address moving around, uh, which is the, this, this, the case for this instruction. So when I run that, digital rebar goes back and it does a whole bunch of work behind the scenes to turn itself into a virtual cluster. It this is uh, in the documentation under the HA node, tells me what the roots are, what my token is, uh, basically builds all these pieces up. And that is the core thing that I need to do. So let's go back over and look at my um, system. So this is that dot one system. I can hit enter here. And what you'll see is it's telling me, hey, wait a second, don't have enough nodes in your cluster. It's the first one built, but it brought up this whole high availability status, HA status, uh, part of the UX. So here it's telling me what our, my ID is, what the uh, active URI, URI is, not the one I'm using. And I'm going to cut and paste this out. And it's showing me all my cluster members, what the address is for that, what its ID is, what the cluster, the consensus ID. Uh, this is a unique ID that's generated by the Backing, backing database for the consensus system that if you want to remove a node, you need to be able to um, retrieve that ID. But otherwise telling me everything is healthy, now it's showing me I'm HA enabled, and so this is a, a good thing. It still has my machines running, um, didn't really change, change much here, except as it goes through this process, you'll notice now it's telling it to go to dot two instead of dot one. So I made this change and already my machines running through this cycle are treating it like an HA cluster automatically. No downtime, they're still just bouncing through their system, doing what they need to do, and, and it's looking great. That also means I can come over here and if I go to dot two, new certificate was generated, new IP, new IP address, but I can log in and now it looks just the same. It's showing me my HA ID, I'm still using vehicle, got a plugin that didn't um, wasn't registered correctly and that's that's fine uh, let's see. so all these pieces are done this is looking great now it's time for me to grow the cluster to do that I'm going to check to make sure that everything came up this looks great this is a normal finished install so I have two nodes waiting to join my cluster to do that I'm going to do the same thing I did before we're going to let you watch. We're not going to see anything on the other systems, but we will on the current manager. Uh, and you'll see in the scroll back here, it's it's actually uh, going to go through elections, um, promoting systems. The current uh, 
system will likely win, should win the election, but that's pretty straightforward. And the next step is, is very straightforward uh, from, from a join perspective. Oh, I hit enter and it scrolled off the screen. So DRP system HA enroll, exactly the same thing as before. In this case, I'm giving the credential information to talk to the target digital rebar server. I haven't changed my password, so this is using the system's default password. I'm setting its consensus address and the interface. The, those systems are running in VM, so they're using a different interface. That's their primary interface. It's the same network. That command talked to both systems, right? It talked to my HA system and the, the, the current HA cluster and the new system, and then it synchronized those two components together and shared information for me. You can do that manually in a sequence of steps. The enroll is handy because it does both uh, together for you. And then it generates the additional information. It shows me an update telling me what's going on with my system. Over here, what I've got, what happened is um, I've got the, the system joining into the cluster. There's a lot of noise in here because I'm running VMs uh, in the background. Let's check it, check this in on the UX. If I do a refresh, what you'll see is, it's excellent. Um, I've got the system going through and doing the uh, extra cluster members. This is great. You might ask, why is this one offline? This is offline because this UX has not accepted the certificate. Um, so as soon as I've accepted the certificate, uh, what will happen is this system, uh, the U, my, my browser can, is actually doing the check. So this is not a behind the scenes check. Your browser is literally touching all of the HA machines in the cluster. And so you have to have accepted the certificate for the endpoint machine, not the cluster certificate, right? There's four IP addresses ultimately in this cluster. The other thing you'll, you'll notice, and this is handy, is that it detects that we are running at different versions of the software. Uh, the leader in this case is running on my desktop, which is, is a little bit ahead. It's running the 4.7 alpha. So there's a mismatch between the stable 4.6.2 release. Uh, and it's alerting me about that fact. If I was doing a rolling upgrade, I would stop one, I'd do that patch, um, and then this would tell me that. It's very handy to see that in the UX so that you can know what's going on as we go through the system. And before we, we do any playing like that, I'm going to go ahead and add our second uh, passive node to the cluster. So the cluster is actually all the way up to a three node system. There we go. That was very easy. I refresh here, exactly the same thing's going to happen. I can visit this cluster, this endpoint, accept the certificate. That looks great. And over here, you'll see I now have a completely functioning cluster. Everything looks good. My first machine is still running the cluster. My machines are still going through their boot loop cycle so that um, everything's, everything's on track. Now, what we want to be able to do is fail and test a failure as part of the scenario. And we're going to do exactly that. So here, I'm just running the system. I can hit control C and it will transition the leadership over to another system. Uh, this is dot one. So yes, that machine, that, that cluster is down. Uh, this is dot two. So we're, we really don't want to even talk to these other systems anymore. Dot two never went down. From its perspective, it's continually going through the system. Uh, that API is up. It transitioned happily over to 100. So here's the 100 system now taking over. It's running. This machine is completely down. The UX is trying to attach to the to it and saying, hey, wait a second. It's not there. I can't see it. And we're getting uh, this alert popped up automatically for me and giving me a very strong indication. Something is not right with my cluster. We are not getting heartbeat entries for that. The reason we do this is because running with a insufficient number of machines in your cluster is very bad. Don't do it. So we want you to be aware that you have only two machines in your cluster. Now, if you had five and one was down, not such a big deal. It's an even number, a little bit of risk. But if you have a three machine cluster and only two are running, uh, that is a cause for immediate action and bringing that system back up. So 
we're going to do exactly that. I'm going to go ahead and just turn that system back on. So now um, that machine is coming back online. You'll notice it's it's saying, hey, wait a second, we aren't in the cluster. Um, we didn't get elected leader. There already is a leader and it's fallen back into I am a passive node state. So it is now waiting for the system to change. It's just in, in the passive monitoring node mode. And if I was to check here, you'll see this machine is still my, my active leader in the cluster. And then over here, this original system is now no longer the leader of the cluster. And we're back to those errors have gone away. Everything looks, looks correct for how things are going. Uh, and the data is synchronized. So we are still continuously running our different uh, VMs. That looks great. And nothing actually got interrupted. And that's the point of doing HA. I'm using my uh, shared virtual address. It's automatically migrating between the systems. When I go through it, it is correctly managing the systems and all those, all those components are going, going well. If I was going to do an upgrade, I would take a passive node down, change the binary, bring it back online and see exactly where it was. I'd take those actions until I completed the cluster migration and then I could migrate the last node and complete that action. Um, super nice way to be able to migrate. Now all the data components, the um, content, that will automatically be synchronized. That's what the HA system is doing in the background as it as it goes. So if I do any action against the manage the the HA IP address, then it will automatically uh, be distributed and copied to the other systems. That's that's exactly the purpose of HA. Uh, one more thing that I could show you is we're going to take down the manager again, and to do that I can just say system cuddle. Uh, stop DR provision. Now this machine is offline again. I'm going to do another transition. That's good. Uh, my uh, first server was faster, so it won the election. And we are back to running from my desktop as the primary primary machine in the system. And and that's the pretty much the full HA demo here. Um, we've got all the components running, things are coming along just like we expect them, and you can now build and deploy Digital Rebar in HA mode. No additional steps required. I hope this was helpful. As always, this is complex stuff. Please feel free to ask questions, um, and we will help you get this running on your own infrastructure. Thanks.